everybody, and welcome to another hobby cheating video. This week, we're going to talk about making a big, cool nuclear waste base. We're going to build it this week because this is a big one. And I'm going to talk about some of the techniques you can use to build cool big bases. Like whether it's a centerpiece model or something like what I'm working on, a big giant knight for an army of knights. Well, a big base is what you need. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it, Vinci V. So as I mentioned, I'm working on a big, awesome uh, knight from the Heresy era. And specifically, uh, I'm going to be building uh, a Nurgle knight uh, for one of my bad guy factions in, in the Heresy. And you'll see more on that in future videos. But of course, first, I've got to get a base down. And so what I wanted to do in this video is talk about the techniques, the tools, the, uh, the various products and things like that that we can use to build a big base. So come with me on this journey so we can make a cool industrial waste nuclear fallout base. Okay, let's get over to the desk. Let's get building. First things first, we're going to, of course, get out our old friend Quark. Now, one of the places I see people often go wrong is they just use the cork and the cork alone and then leave the cork showing. We're not going to do that, but the cork is very important. It's a great base piece to just build up some height. And I want to raise the knight up because eventually we're going to have a gross nuclear toxic river in this base. So we'll need some height to allow the river to have a place to be. Um, I measure the cork, I tear it up, I set it down, and I place the knight on it. And this is important. When you're building a big giant base like this, especially for a larger creature or monster or robot or whatever, um, if that robot has feet, you need to test the robot feet and where they go. So constantly you're going to be wanting to effectively dry fit your model onto the base as you continue to add elements and things like that. Make sure that what you're building is keeping, like, will have the appropriate place for the model to sit. Some big models take up quite a large amount of their base, so you're going to want to constantly be checking as you're adding all the different elements that are going to make the world feel credible that make sure that you can still put the actual model somewhere on the base. Okay, next up, we're going to add some more variation in the rocks and the terrain. So the cork itself will provide for nice, basically, hills once we have them mudded over, but we want some actual big chunks of rock. For that, we're turning to our friend Indoor Pine Bark. You can get this from your local uh, hardware store or garden center or anything like that. I just go, there's like a Home Depot near me or a Lowe's, that's generally what I go to, to their uh, garden center, and you can buy big bags of this stuff. And this bark looks like really awesome in-scale big rocks. So we just get out a bunch of pieces of it, and effectively we figure out where it kind of fits and place it around. Again, we're going to want to make sure that we're still constantly dry fitting and testing and allowing for the model. But you don't need a bunch of chunks of these, and it is these aren't great for a model to sit on unless it's a smaller model and you're breaking a piece up, in which case if you're on a rock face you could do it. But in this case, the weird the, the feet of the knight really aren't going to be able to, to sit on these. So we want them off to the side and creating interesting texture variations to make our scene more credible. All right, next up, we're going to get some cool stuff out. So if this is going to be an industrial wasteland base, we need some cool things in the world. And so I, here I have a selection of different things from Gamer's Grass. Gamer's Grass makes really awesome uh, different products for these kind of basing elements. They're not a sponsor or anything, I just really like their products, so, you know, check them out. Um, and here I have a couple different things, like I have some alien infestation, um, I've got just some general industrial waste, all of that kind of stuff. This is going to end up being perfect for what we want to do. Uh, ultimately, this will be a, a Nurgle house knight that's on top. Um, I know Nurgle isn't actually a house, but it's a house who fell to Nurgle. Uh, and so, you know, having things that are clearly like toxic waste, as though we're trying to make the Ninja Turtles, and other sorts of elements with weird tentacles on it and things like that are going to be perfect for this base. Yet again, I kind of scatter them around. Now when I glue them down, there there's an obvious break in between sort of the cork and these elements, or the ground and these elements, and that's all right. That's why I'm gluing them down now, uh, because I do want these things to be uh, in place where I can then mud over it later and integrate them into the seam. So again, I just kind of scatter them around. The key with this is often less is more. Don't try to fill the base. You know, two, three, four elements on these bigger bases is generally enough. It sets the scene, it sets the story. Unless you're building a literal junkyard, 
uh, then you don't need to make every square inch be full of stuff. By the way, throughout this video, I'm using glue, and the glue I'm using is actually from Aquarium Co-op. And uh, this was a friend of the channel who sent a bunch of this glue along, and I have to say, I am in love with this stuff. Now, I've frequently and been a longtime supporter of Loctite Gel Glue. This completely killed that for me. Um, this stuff is great. Comes in little two packs for four dollars. Once it 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 dries rock hard, but it bonds to like everything. I am loving this stuff. I've used it for a few different bases now and been just completely impressed. So check it out. I'll put a link down in the description. Again, they sent me the the glue for free, but there's no like they're not a sponsor. They didn't. There's no kickback or anything here. I just really like it, and I think it's a legitimately cool product, and it seems to bond to most anything I've thrown it at. So great super glue, good stuff. Okay. So let's keep going with the base. Now that we've got all these elements in place, it's time to start getting out our mud. So for this, I'm going to use some huge miniatures ground paste. Now, huge miniatures makes a whole range of different ground pastes. Uh, they're really nice. They come in these little, uh, uh, I don't know, not tins, but I don't know, containers. Uh, and honestly, for most stuff, like one bottle will more or less base your army. So that's pretty efficient. Uh, and Huge is a local company here in Ohio, uh, where I am, so, you know, gotta, gotta give them a shout out. But I really like this mud texture. It's very small. It's perfect in-scale mud. It's grainy, but not overly so. So I really do like using this. And I'm gonna spread it all over the base, so I'm covering everything up. Now, I really want to focus in on what we're doing here when we put down any kind of ground paste like this. I'm covering over all the cork because I want to hide it, but where the cork levels meet, I am trying to get goop built up and hide the edges of the cork. I want it to disguise the obvious torn cork edges. So I build larger areas of that where like it's built up as goop to create a smooth change in the level between the highest piece of cork, the next lowest, and then the ground. Not everywhere. You can have breaks in the rock. You can have places where it's broken up and there's sudden drops and all of that. That will feel natural. What doesn't feel natural is when you have one perfectly round piece of cork sitting on one perfectly round piece of cork sitting on one perfectly round piece of cork. That is so obviously fake. But if you build the mud up over top of it, all over the base to where it's bridging the gap between those, and so now you have all sorts of different level changes happening, that will make it feel more natural. I'm also focusing around the edges of the other basing elements, so things like where I've put the um, little barrels or the little, you know, danger toxic waste stuff, all the different basing elements I use from Gamer's Grass, um, I'm going to uh, make sure that the mud is up onto the side of that and integrating those elements into the scene as well. If you don't get it perfect as it shrinks, don't worry, we can hide it with a later step. But I get a healthy amount of that mud all over the base, except in the middle where I'm going to put toxic waste goo. Some of that I leave open, some I do some mud in, just here and there, very thin, to give us an, a, an appropriate base for what will be a toxic river. But on everything that's meant to be rock or mud or anything like that, we're mudding that up. We're, we're going mudding. Get it, get it nice and thick, connect all your elements. Now, while that's still wet, and this is the key, now I'm going to get out some Martian Iron Earth. This is classic Games Workshop crackle medium, right? I'm going to get out some Martian Iron Earth, and where the robot's feet are, like, hitting the ground, I'm going to, like, basically where the, the little toesies are, I'm going to spread some of this out relatively thickly on top of the still wet mud. Now, what's cool about this, as you'll see later when it's dry, is... When you're spreading this out, um, the, the awesome part about it is you get, uh, the, the two levels will dry at different speeds. The under layer of mud will dry quicker than the, the crackle medium will dry. So it will dry, and then as this is drying, it will pull it apart, and you'll get even bigger crackles. So I kind of want it to look like where he's stepping, he's literally ripping the ground apart and causing cracks and stuff like that. It's also just a good look for a toxic waste wasteland. So I kind of spread a little bit of it here and there. Remember the key when working with Martian Iron Earth or any sort of crackle medium is the thicker it is, the bigger the cracks, but also layering it on top of an already wet medium that's drying like this mud or any other basing paste will cause even bigger cracks. So pretty cool technique. Um, that you can utilize to get some really, like, if you want that super wasteland, you know, salt basin, dry desert thing, 
this is the way to get there. Now, also while the mud is wet, we're going to get out our rocks. Now, I'm going to go through several different sizes of rocks here, uh, several different sizes of grit. The key is to start then again placing this around. Now, one of the things I do at this point off camera is again test his feet. And I actually am going to start making sure that these elements, like the things that I've glued down, I'm actually doing near some of where his feet are, are going to be, so that that way he has a set locked location when I put him on the base later and I don't have to guess at it. Like, if you have a couple of basing elements that effectively touch the side of, like, the knight's feet, you can kind of slot him into place. But it doesn't look like he's literally slotting in. It's just a few elements here and there. At any rate, um, I want these, the, I'm going to do two things with these rocks. One, I'm going to use basically three different sizes of rocks to break up the uh, terrain and make it look like it's, you know, more credible, more natural, more realistic. Where rocks, it turns out, comes in lots of different sizes in nature. And I'm going to spread them around and just work them into the wet mud. Once that dries, it's going to become basically glue and hold all of these rocks in place. I don't need to try to glue them separate, which is good because it means that I don't have sort of problems with then having a lot of glue everywhere and stuff like that. They're integrated in, the dirt is coming up on the side, it feels very natural. If later anything comes loose, you can always go in and glue some more on top. So you still always have that option, but this lets you set down a nice base. The other thing I do is when I test the feet, I make sure they're touching the ground, that they're flush with the ground. And if they're not, I put a little more rocks there and build it up so it's going to match the foot. And all of the little knight's feet are now touching the ground. You don't get that like gap between some of the feet where your base has gotten uneven. So this is your chance to correct for that. If you've added other elements or things have moved or warped or changed or your feet aren't completely even, you can kind of build up the rocks and the ground and stuff like that to meet, right? Raise it up to meet the feet of the knight. But I scatter these three types of rocks around. Again, not directly where it's going to be standing unless I'm trying to meet the feet, but in different places. Once again, you kind of want to work in like three or four zones of these different things. They should be scattered, not completely overlapped. You don't want it to be like no rocks, all rocks of different sizes. They're kind of overlapping like a Venn diagram over the base, right? And as all those rocks are on there, that's then going to give me a really nice way to break up the base as well once I make it where I can have the mud be one color and the rocks be a different color to again cause more more visual noise and confusion on the base and make it more aesthetically appealing. So with all my rocks placed uh, now the only thing to do is let this all dry. So here it is let's take a look at it all dry here's how it came out I think it looks pretty cool and then of course here's how it looks uh, primed. So I went ahead and primed it up. There is truly a magical moment when you bring uh, uh, the prime and how it brings it all together. One thing I ended up doing off camera, I didn't really think to record this, but I, as I was looking at it uh, before that final image, I realized it needed a little more. I took some of the extra tubes, because these big knights have a lot of extra tubes depending on the weapon configuration you give them, and I just kind of worked those tubes into the mud when it was wet as well. So you can see how there's a few of these tubes kind of are scattered around the base, like running into the, the mud and then coming up and out and running back in. It just feels like there's pipes or tubes or wires that are under the ground, which is, again is pretty natural to our world, where you can't dig in your yard without having someone show up and mark it so you don't dig a shovel and electrocute yourself. And so um, that was just another little element the more of those kinds of things, if you can work in elements from the figure itself or from the enemies, scatter some swords, some shields, uh, you know, weapons or skulls, anything like that. All that stuff is great to just add a little more character and flavor to the world. Now, unfortunately, because it's primed and ready to go, we can't put in the river yet. But come back in the future, and I promise I'm going to show you not only a knight, but we're going to talk about how to do the water effects and make the actual nuclear river on this in a future video. So stay with me. This big old night is going to be a couple videos, and I really hope you'll come on this journey with me to make this awesome night for the heresy. So with that, I will say thank you very much for watching this. I hope this gave you ideas for your own basing, some cool tools and products you can use to make a fun, credible, and exciting base. If you liked it, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future and to stay up to date with this very cool project we're working on. Uh, we always have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions about anything I used, 
drop those down in the comments below. I always read every comment on my videos. Uh, again, if you want to support the channel, lots of ways you can do that. There's links down there where you can pick up your hobby supplies, uh, including some of the stuff you saw me utilize in this video. Uh, there's a merch store down there. You can pick up a, a game from Uncle Adam and myself. Those are all linked down there. Or, of course, you could join the Patreon. The Patreon is a community focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd certainly love to have you along. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.